Hello, travelers, and welcome to June 1st, 2019. Can you believe that? We are already in the sixth month of 2019. I don't know about you, but, um, well, first of all, an explanation. Time has a quality. It can be slow. It can be fast. It can be happy. It can be sad. So there's a quality to time. And right now, for me personally, I don't know if anybody else is feeling this, the quality of the time is like uber fast. It's like super, super fast. But on the material plane and on the material level, I feel as though I'm not moving. I'm not doing anything. I'm not seeing any gains or any successes. I'm not accomplishing anything that you know I, I want to do. Even though I know that that quote unquote is not true, you know, it, that's just the way that the quality of the time, it's moving so fast. I feel as if I'm I'm standing still and running in place or running in quicksand. So it's really an interesting phenomena. Um, we are, uh, our new moon will be in Gemini on June 3rd. And so um, I'm going to be posting up a moon report for you uh, probably later today on the website. Um I do have the romance readings for June 2019. All 12 of them are done and loaded up on the, the website. I am working at the moment on the individual readings. I can't give you a time frame in terms of exactly when I'm going to be finished, but it'll be sometime this week. And hopefully it'll be before my um, open discussion that I'm going to be hosting on Zoom. If you guys um, see this and you haven't signed up for the free newsletter you can uh, click on the I, yeah, right up there in the corner. Uh, that'll take you over to the website, and you should see somewhere, I don't know if it's at the top, where you can sign up for the free newsletter because the open discussion is going to be open to anybody with the link, okay? Um, and I, I'm only going to have 40 minutes because it's a meeting. It's not a webinar. I haven't upgraded yet. Uh, <laughs> To that and so it's going to be an open discussion where we're going to be talking about astrology I will be taking questions um, so it'll be astrology tarot uh, Akashic records just the metaphysical in general um, and I kind of have it broken down you know 10 minutes for each subject um, but you know we'll, we'll have to play that by ear <clears throat> when I get an opportunity to upgrade to the webinar package um, you will be able at that point to go back in and view it. It'll be recorded to the cloud and you can go back in and view it at a later date. Um, I'm also, um, I don't know if many of you remembered, I've been talking about this astrology PowerPoint presentation I've been working on for like Methuselah's years. And I wasn't able to figure out when I recorded the, the audio with the slides, I couldn't get the timing right, and then I couldn't discover what was what, even though I had named each one. So I figured out a way now that I'm going to be able to do that. I'll be bringing it to you through the Zoom portal. Um, and we will start out, you know, the introduction of how I do astrology. So that'll be something really, really interesting. Um, I will send out a newsletter for that when everything is ready. But just the first one on June 8th, it'll be at 1, I think that's a Saturday, at 1 p.m., that's CST. So I'm two hours uh, behind on Eastern Standard Time. I'm, I think, two to two to three hours behind on Pacific Time, one hour on Mountain Time. So do the calculations, um, and hopefully I'll see you there. Now, <clears throat> I'll send out, like I said, I'll send out another newsletter on Monday again with that information and then about maybe an hour before the actual presentation is supposed to start I'll send out the link so make sure that you are signed up make sure that you um, have my email address uh, coming from MailChimp which is Hidden Lotus Tarot at HiddenLotusTarot.com that you save that to your contacts otherwise that's going to go to spam and you're going to miss it so with that being said we're going to do a quick open reading for June 1st um, I'm going to be using the Fantastical Creatures Tarot. I'm going to be clarifying today with the Indo Venus Avilas, the playing cards, and then you'll get an opportunity to wrap that reading up with the um, oh um oh here it is with the um, Psychic Oracle Tarot. 
I just finished the Leo reading, uh, individual reading, and it was quite uh, a lovely reading. And I, I'm so glad I was able to bring that to you. I know I'm telling you about it, but you ain't got it, ain't gonna see it yet, but you will. So, <clears throat> with that being said, let's go ahead and um, I've done some shuffling, so I'm gonna do a bit more, and then we're gonna lay nine cards. I will give you the impressions, the energy that's coming off of the cards, then I will read the meanings to you, and then we'll do some clarification should we need to, okay? Please keep in mind that this is a general reading. The messages will not resonate with everyone, so take what you can from the reading. Disregard what you cannot. Um, but in order to gain any insight into your own personal situation requires a personal reading. I have several packages um, of personal reading levels, and basically it's you give me your name, your birth date, and your sun sign, sun sign only, please, and then I tune in, I pluck you out of the collective using that information and can give you the, in, we, and I, I conduct the reading that way. Uh, the reading is recorded by video. It is uploaded to Google Drive. Once it's completed, you get the link. Then you need to download and save it, and you can view it as many times as you want. Um, I do only keep those readings um, up in the Google Drive for about 24 hours. After that, I delete the link and the video with no way to recover. So that's why it's important that if you get a reading from me that you go ahead and try to download and save it, okay? So with that said, <clears throat> And I have a really good uh, thingamajig that I want to present to you guys. I've, I've just gotten all of the notes together. Now i got to put it together. Um, and I'm super excited about it. <clears throat> so here we go. Four of Cups. Seven of of pentacles, three of wands, well, emotions, the physical doing, and the desire, okay, nine of pentacles, wow, that's awesome, the hermit, And that is a nine. So I have two nines uh, right next to each other. And that's important when numbers repeat. Here is a queen of cups. So I'm either looking at a water sign individual, um, Cancer, Scorpio, and or Pisces. If not, as a situation, um, or simply the quality of it is that you are feeling something quite, I don't know, deeply or intuitively. Okay. Wow. The Ace of Swords. The Six of Wands. Oh, isn't that funny? And the king of pentacles so an earth sign individual Taurus Capricorn or Virgo if not that this is uh, about <clears throat> uh, that ability to really get a handle on something either what you're doing how you're doing it how you're investing, what your finances are. Because the coins are not just about finances. They are about the actual doing of something. It represents the physical third dimensional plane. Um, this is uh, some kind of partnership, either offer or... Now, a partnership can be anything, all right? It's not always romance. Um, you are in partnership with people in your family. You are in partnership with your friends. You are in partnership. When you go out and buy something in the store, you have a partnership or a relationship with the person who's selling you the thing. Even the, 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 um, the cashier who's standing on the other side of the register, there may be small chit chat, or maybe there's no chit chat, but she's ringing up your crap and you're doing the transaction. So that is a partnership and it is brief. 
okay? Um, but nevertheless, that's what it is. And you hear me say all the time that no matter what type of partnership and or relationship that you are in, there is simply, there's only one common denominator that ties all of those different types of partnerships together. And that is you. All right. You, you are always in partnership or relationship in some way in every aspect of your life. So what is our advice card or, or what the quality or the, 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 the thing of the reading is about? It is the seven of wands. Okay. That is over the whole reading. Now, interestingly, I only have one major arcana card. It is smack dab in the center of the reading, and it is the hermit. That is our Virgo card. Virgo rules the sixth house of work, service, and duty to others, but also work, service, and duty to ourselves. Are you working all the time and not sleeping and not work exercising and <clears throat> not taking your care of yourself because you are out doing other things for other people or because your job, uh, the environment in your job ha has made life such? Well, that means that you're not operating at your full optimal um ability. So what do you do to change that? You need to look at those things. That's what that card can sometimes mean and what the sixth house rules. Okay. How do you fit in eight hours of work, sleep and play and still do all of the things that you need to do, right? And take care of yourself in the meantime. So it could, it could talk about diet, exercise, food, water, vitamins, um, the actual, whatever it is that you're doing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so I think it's important that that card has come out in the center. Now, two nines can mean a change of address or a house move. Well, you know, not necessarily a house move. It could be that you are moving from one office building to another, one floor to another, one company to another. But two nines can also speak to the idea. Let me make sure I get this right for you. I got a new phone and I don't like it. It's another Blackberry. I'm a devout blackberry user always have been will continue to be but i don't particularly like this is the the key to and i don't particularly like it okay so the two nines can speak to a change of address or a property move and given all of these pentacles here let's see i only have two pentacles um then this could literally be um about a financial situation in terms of moving or property issue, because that's what Capricorn, well, not necessarily. Capricorn is the, he typically represents Capricorn. Uh, Virgo represents uh, Virgo. Uh, Virgo represents Virgo. The Hermit represents Virgo. So, you know, uh, Capricorn is, what are you striving for? It is the highest ideal. Your, you know, is this about your, is, is this about working to retire at the end? Is this about your, you're um, raising your children and getting them through college. Is this about getting that office uh, on the 16th floor with the corner view? Is this about that promotion? Is this about, um, you know, what is it? And are you committed to it? And what does it take to get there? The other meaning of the two nines is one of you needs to spend some time alone. Well, <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> so what do I have? I have two cups, two wands, two pentacles, and a sword. No, three pentacles. I'm sorry. Let me start over. Two cups, three pentacles two wands and a swords card okay well the only thing i can do i'm going to tell you as i start to go into depth about this i won't be able to look at these two court cards okay so whether you are male or female heterosexual or same sexual Let's take what we can, disregard what we cannot, all right? Because I do read for um, LGBTQ people, 
I, I do. I read, you know, I don't, everybody needs advice <laughs> at some point or a bit of clarity, you know, or a confirmation on something. So, you know, don't let that stop you. Um, so let's start out with the, um, impress y'all. I'm going to use my fingerprint unlock on the Blackberry. Hey, there it goes. My priv didn't have that, but, uh, at least I don't think it did. Um, I'm going to get that phone fixed. I'm telling you. So I want to take a look at what the four of cups, seven of pentacles, three of wands, nine of pentacles, ace of swords, and six of wands, and even the seven have to say as it relates to this hermit card. Hopefully we'll find out something. Uh, so we will start out with the four of cups and we're going to go in the order in which the cards fell. And then I will read you the specific meanings uh, of the cards from this deck, okay? So let's see. Now, the Four of Cups next to the Hermit card. It tells of a gentle inner peace and a personal satisfaction and fulfillment coming into your life. Well, I mean, I see it here. It says that Peace and satisfaction surround and encompass you. And it is a message, it brings a message that solitude will bring about spiritual enlightenment. Well, remember the two nines. One of you may need to spend some time alone. Maybe this is about, sometimes the hermit card can show up when you need to take a retreat, when you need to go on sabbatical, when you need to get away from it all, you know? Leave your partner with the kids and the pets and all of that crap and you go off someplace and reconnect with the earth. That's important. Okay, center yourself. Now, let's take a look at this seven of pentacles. Nothing about the seven of pentacles. Three of wands. nothing about the three of wands, the nine of pentacles. And I think this is quite significant. Uh, as most of you know, who've been with me for a while, when I read cards, I don't always read what is here because sometimes what has not shown up is equally or more important. And from the seven of pentacles to the nine gives me two pentacles. To me, this doesn't look like it doesn't have the energy of a subtraction if the nine of pentacles had a shown up before the seven, then I could say, you know, okay, well, that's five pentacles, but it, it's a progression, so to speak. So there's two pentacles and twos always represent choices, decisions, options, being at a crossroads. Sometimes it can represent oppositions. This is uh, you being opposed to yourself. Maybe you don't know exactly what you should be doing. The pentacles, remember, um, maybe you might be working two jobs. Maybe that's why the hermit's coming out. Uh, maybe it could be that somebody's in opposition against you, okay? Or the situation is such that you, you, you've you been struggling to get through, right? Okay. So, nine of pentacles. Nothing about the nine of pentacles, but the two nines suggest a house move or change of address. Now we will look at the ace of swords. Aces are cards of great power and force, but they simply mean opportunity. You have to grasp that opportunity when something comes. So this could be a, a quick insight. It could be clear, quick thinking making a decisive, uh, uh, being decisive in your decision-making process, um, speaking what you need to say or listening to whatever message may be coming in. Why do I say that? Because the swords always represent thoughts, perceptions, beliefs, ideas, and communication, okay? So here's the Ace of Swords. 
And the funny thing about this particular spread, as I'm looking at it, is that there are two representations of Jupiter here, and, and I'll explain that in a moment. Now, interestingly, there's a thing that says with the Two of Pentacles. Well, the Two of Pentacles is not really here. It's kind of implied in, in a way. It indicates financial gain, success, and victory, which could be why this card has come out. This doesn't always represent a person. This could be you standing in your with your bank book in your hand going, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's look at the six of wands. You know, maybe this is some about some investments or, or a banker kind of a person who comes to your aid to kind of help you out. Okay, the six of wands. Nothing about the six of wands. And now I'm going to look at the seven of wands. Just on the off chance, because this is what's over the whole reading, okay? Man, that time went by quick. Nothing, okay? Nothing about the Seven of Wands. So what I'm going to do now, and I'll probably, let me reset this. Just let me reset it. Because now I feel like I'm, remember how I told you how things just seem to be going by really fast? That's what I mean. Okay, so now we're going to look at the readings of, of the card, the meanings of the cards here. And I'm going to tell you what they mean as each deck has its own particular specific language. The Four of Cups. Something important is missing from your life, but you are unable to determine what it is. You have withdrawn emotionally, waiting in a sea of uncertainty. Well, you know, that's maybe the way that you feel. In the physical world or in the physical sense, you feel pretty okay. Maybe you're just bored and you you need something new. You need some new kind of project or some new kind of idea. Okay? And maybe you've been struggling trying to figure out what that thing is. Seven of Pentacles. You will gain financially from your hard work. Now, how cool is that? And maybe this is the idea that after you get there, remember from the seven to the nine, you get an opportunity to rest. Okay. Here is the three of wands. I love this three of wands card. You are building a firm foundation. More patience and planning are needed before all of the pieces are in place. Now, I find that to be interesting, too, because the, sometimes the Seven of Pentacles is waiting for the harvest to come in. But this is the Nine of Pentacles is sometimes that idea about just buckling down and doing it. If you know the card from the Rider Waite deck, that's a woman standing in the garden. Well, it's like she just kind of ignored all of the pain and the sorrow and whatever, and she just kept her nose to the grindstone, and she did it. And eventually, she got to where she wanted to be. Let's take a look at this uh, Nine of Pentacles, what it says here. Now, granted, this reading is not going to be positive for everybody, okay? The Nine of Pentacles says your financial situation is changing for the better and stress is evaporating. Material well-being and safety build a strong security base. The Hermit. You know, everybody's situation is different. And sometimes unforeseen things happen. Um, you know, I stand by my readings, but the truth is it's 50-50, right? Because people, ha everybody has um, choices and options. So when someone makes a different decision, they can change the outcome. Even you, you make a different choice, a different decision, you alter the outcome. The Hermit card. This suggests that there's a, a, a need for a time of peace and quiet to contemplate decisions. Do not make hasty choices, but ask advice of a knowledgeable person you trust. It also says that if poor health is involved, it points to a period of much needed rest and recuperation. I think for some of you that's coming, but I also think that to me, the hermit is, is, a, is a card about stillness as if to say maybe everything is frozen or it, everything um, has been suspended in such a way before you're going to get the opportunity to move on. And that 
that time frame of suspension or delay, so to speak, is um, giving room and opportunity for you to replan, rethink, revise, rework. It's not, this is not a, and I don't know if we've got a, a retrograde. You know, some planets are going into retrograde. Uh, let me get my notes. Remember I told you those notes I made? Let me get them. And these are important retrograde uh, because they are the big outer planets, Pluto and Saturn uh, and also Jupiter. All three of those planets are in motion, but, but let's see here. Hold on. Now y'all see all these notes I got, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Now, these dates are far out. Um, but... Because they're the slow, outer-moving planets, um, you can feel the effects. You can start to feel the effects further out or sooner, okay? And they have long-lasting effects. Now, that's right. The station points. Back in April of 2019, Pluto stationed on uh, the 24th of April and Saturn stationed on the 30th of April. Um, now, what this means is that the planets kind of grind to a halt and, and it can um, kind of brand or amplify the energy. It also creates triggering mechanism, mechanisms. Um, and you can start to feel the effects uh, of the stationing within a few weeks. And it's sort of like a, a stationary conjunction. It gives you a sneak preview of what may be coming. So from early to April, May... There can be, we're looking at shakeups in the government, important criminal investigations, perhaps secrets being divulged. We have environmental and climatological issues, uh, scandals perhaps with celebrities or very important people. Um, but in September, now mind you, we are now in June, uh, Virgo, Virgo, Saturn is going to go direct and Pluto is going to go direct in October, okay, of this year. So what you may be experiencing already are some, some of the effects, even though you may not necessarily be seeing major things, whatever may be happening for you or not happening for you, you're kind of getting a sneak preview of what's going to come up, come up as we move into 2020. And what do I keep telling y'all about 2020? I keep telling y'all that ain't nothing going to be the same. All right. So did I look at the six of wands and the seven of wands? I did. So I read the, the nine of pentacles to you. I read the hermit to you. Here is the queen of cups. <clears throat> Pay attention. It says, if this card relates to a person, she is very feminine and loving. If you are a man or you take the male role in the relationship, this person could be your mom, a wife, or a lover. But if this card represents a situation, okay, it represents a positive, creative endeavor. Ace of Swords. A powerful new beginning brings a major breakthrough that can help you to triumph over difficulties. Any decisions excuse me, made at this time will influence your life for some time. Now, what's interesting about this card is this on the card, I don't know if you can see in the back, there's the Norse uh, god Thor. Well, Thor is the Roman equivalent of Jupiter. He's the god of thunder, lightning, um, and he represents beneficial energies. Now, he had goats. 
His goats were pulled by two, his chariot was pulled by two magical goats named Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder. And what they did was protected Thor. This card is about breaking through a stagnant cycle to get things moving. So in effect, this kind of tells me that three wands have come in, the two things coming together to make a third thing. You made your choice about what you're going to do, or you've been presented with the choice about what you want to do, or you have determined that you need to do something because something is missing, right? And now everything is kind of frozen. I dare say that some of you, though, things will be moving quite quickly. The... Um, Six of Wands. I know sometimes y'all think I am nuts the way I read cards, but I don't care. Listen, an important message will soon come to you in a dream or an unexpected event. Now pay attention to this last sentence. Courage and determination are necessary to win your way through opposition. Remember those two pinnacles I was talking about? Okay. Remember how I talked about determination and focus? This is about the power of experience. So it could very well be that this kind of something is missing or things aren't going the way that I want. The thing that I was talking to you about for myself, there's power in this experience, okay, that you really can utilize in a way that's going to help you get through this. This is Jupiter's eagles. This is about the long view. He represents Zeus. Zeus, Thor, Jupiter, all kind of the same. Okay? Now, here's the king of pentacles. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at whatever this message is. Here's the King of Pentacles. And he says, if this is a person, this card represents a wealthy, secure man who is experienced in handling money. The appearance of such a man will help you in business. But this also says you can find new meaning and spiritual comfort in nature. Remember, I was telling you some of y'all maybe need to step back for a moment and go get your head together because something is about to change for you. This card is about discovering and understanding future cycles in your life. This is about um, reputation, civility, and having good business sense. Here is the Seven of Wands, and I think this card really kind of sums it up, even though you may not understand what the hell I'm talking about. You are now in a, pos a strong position to carry your dreams and desires to success. It says you have faced adversity and won. Now, underneath is the nine of swords. That would give me three nines. So, for some of you, this is about not it really what I'm getting is not to give up. Uh, don't be distracted you can do this it is the power of the experience and I think the hermit card is coming in to give you that momentary break so that some of you can carry on but for others of you this is about everything that you've gone through before the power of that experience you're gonna get an opportunity to get a break to catch a break for some of you, however, here is the Nine of Swords underneath the Seven of Wands. And the way that it kind of shows up for me is that this could be where you are at the moment for some of you mentally in a mental space. It says, if you have broken secular or karmic laws, expect to pay the price. Look closely at your plans. Something is not to your benefit. Now, what does this mean? It's about distraction. 
The harpies both attract and repel as they warn of hidden perils. Their human faces beguile other humans to forget the danger and move closer to ignore the unpleasant lessons in life and the consequences. Now, this could be, for some of you, a major legal thing that's coming up. And really what this is saying is that this is about understanding past lives and settling karmic debts. I, I, that part, I don't know what exactly that means. So what I'm going to do... And maybe the karmic debt is not your debt, but it could be this individual's debt who's coming back to repay you for something you did in a past life. Yeah? Maybe this person feels as if something is missing from their life, and they're trying to get some clarity on what they should be doing or need to do. Maybe they've been spending their time chasing after the material, and now they realize, well, I got all this crap, but I don't feel any better. Yeah? <laughs> there are many different ways this card can, can, can play out. I want to look at this hermit. That's really what I want to look at. And I think what I think one of the other things that's really interesting to me is this, who she represents. This is Lilith. Lilith was the first wife of Adam. Eve was not the first wife. Okay. Lilith was the first wife. Uh, because of the story of Lilith, she didn't want to be married. She didn't do anything God told her. He said, look, if you don't obey what Adam says, I'm going to kill all your babies. She said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> right? She just wasn't going to do it. And so ultimately she was turned into the idea of a succubus or she was turned into the idea of the tempter or the the temptress or the seductress. She was the, the female that made men do things that um, they normally wouldn't do. She caused night emissions, okay? Um, and so this could be the idea, that karmic debt or that karmic thing, is that maybe you have been struggling against or fighting against um, people coming in to help you, but... Maybe because from a past life, that karmic life, uh, you just weren't, you were fiercely independent the way Lilith was. Um, but now that karmic debt is being paid and you're going to get an opportunity to kind of reap the benefit. I don't know. Uh, like I said, this is going to, you know, maybe that's caused you some issues in, in the past, right? Maybe that's caused you some issues in, in whatever it's been doing. Maybe you were the one who's been out, you know burning the midnight candle at both ends and now you got there and you're like man something missing i don't know <laughs> right so let's take a look at this hermit card and see if the endo venus can tell us what's up a sincere friend there's our queen of wands and she's typically our business female contrariness and displeasure so this can be just that feeling of, or maybe other people are uh, displeased with your behavior, what you've been doing, or maybe they just don't damn like you. Well, look. Here is the dark-haired man. Un jeune en brune. Un brune hariga man. Un jove morena, un joviani bruno, a dark-haired man. And this could be the idea that there's been a bit of angst or anxiety or tensions between you and this individual. I don't know. In this situation, and maybe the two of you have had to take a step back from each other. Get some clarity about whatever it is that 
that's underlying something is missing. <clears throat> and maybe this is about, okay, you know, we done been through the shit together. We've come so far, we can finish this. Yeah, no matter what this is about. Let's look at this six of wands here. I do want to look at this card. Because it speaks about a message. But one that may come through dream time. The soldier. So we're talking about perhaps laws or legalities. Law enforcement and all like that. Delay. One second. And then the journey. Hold on one second. It's slow movement. Hold on. All right. Sorry about that. That was my neighbor. She wants me to look after her dog for her tomorrow. Uh, you know, my little Shih Tzu died. She's got a lasso apso. And uh, she came with this chicken, this rotisserie. I'm like, girl, you know you ain't got the bribe me. But I was like, okay, bet that. So anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, this. What I wanted to look at was this, um, was it the Seven of Wands? Oh, I was talking about these three cards I think there's been some kind of legal delay before you can move forward. That's that's how I am interpreting those particular cards, okay? Some kind of legality. That's also a partnership thing. So this could be a merger. It could be a divorce. It could be um, an acquisition. Um, it can be, you know, it could be, it could be anything. Announcements. It could be anything. So... What I'm going to do is I want to pull playing cards on what this seven of, I'm sorry, this nine of swords is all about and give you the meaning of the three nines because that would give us three nines. My mom's in Canada this morning. She sent me an email. My mom's so funny. Okay, so we want to look at the three nines. I'm just going to pull up one of the meanings. Three nines implies good luck and or a surprise windfall. Uh, maybe, you know, that's what I'm saying. Maybe that karmic payback is that everything you've gone through, it's going to be worth it in the end. <laughs> okay. It, it could be that. And let me take a look at the other meaning of the three nines. It says an important relationship lesson is being successfully integrated. And that's also that karmic thing so don't let that card fool you but i'm gonna go ahead and pull cards because as i say um everybody's situation is different legal or karmic four of hearts which is like another four of cups there's a 10 of spades. Now, this is interesting because it's a 10. That means that this situation is about to change from a 9 to a 10. For some of you, this could be the idea that maybe you need to really slow down. Okay, because sometimes the 9 of swords and the 10 of swords together can be talking about overexertion, sometimes a medical issue, in which case if there's something that's been bugging you or bothering you physically, pains, aches, just not get to the doctor. And there's the king of spades. Well, isn't that interesting? Typically, he's going to represent, per se, um, he can sometimes represent an air sign male, but he can also sometimes represent a, um, <clears throat> one second, you know I got it here. Somebody tall, dark, stranger, somebody probably from a, a, a foreign land. But sometimes he can represent a father or grandfather, rather rich or poor, and other nefarious characters. 
And maybe this is the somebody that you have been dealing with. You're coming out of a situation or this is what the previous energy is hanging over the fact that maybe something bad happened with somebody before in whatever situation this is in, right? But that's about to end now. So let's take a look at this four of hearts and what it is telling us. Hold on one second. I'm telling y'all, I need my own office. Okay, so Four of Hearts is speaking about, it signifies that you're going to, that satisfaction and pleasure from helping others, especially the people that you love, is that you're happy in your work and you're going to be pretty busy with a sense of purpose. That's where we were. Maybe you're worried about all of the things that you've been doing and you're just, as I say, you're just not seeing whatever the hell it is that you've been trying to see. But that 10 of spades tells me that this is going to end quickly. Hold on one second. I think, here we go. It says it represents a blockage or a dead end. It is considered the card of disappointment. And it means that something that you've been working on can progress no longer. Let's see that. Unless you are prepared to make a change of direction. Many people are reluctant to do this. And can blame ourselves or others for your misfortune. This card is about taking a moment to step back. Pause, reevaluate, and then decide where to go from here. Once this is done, you can make a new start and ultimately achieve success. And maybe this card is simply just that this is your energy in which you're in right now. Okay? Because here is the king of spades. He can represent a strong and powerful man or person, intelligent, honest, loyal, ambitious, and practical. Um, if you are male, um, I'm sorry, if you are female, this card represents strong male influences in your life. It could be a father, a brother, a husband, a relative, or a close friend. But it indicates that the male presence has been around for some time. The person tries to be a good person, but tends to see everything in terms of right or wrong and can find it difficult to see other people's point of view. That could even be you, okay? Because you rely on logic and ignore your intuition. But it's the power of the experience, okay? One card for the Psychic Oracle Tarot. Formulate your question. All right, here we go. It's a four of pentacles. It says a firm foundation. Now, remember I was talking to some of you that maybe with that nine and that ten, there may be some kind of physical issue, health issue. Maybe some of you are having back problems or back pain or back issues or maybe feeling like you just got too much on your damn back. I don't know. <laughs> Let's read it. It's a four of pentacles. At least I think it's a four of pentacles. Hold on. Yeah, it's a pentacles card. Yep. Pentacles. The card says, this card denotes that you have already or are currently working towards establishing a solid foundation in the material world. See the mountains ahead of him? Using good judgment and heeding lessons from the past concerning financial matters will assist you in laying a firm groundwork. By doing so, 
security will have a better chance of building in the future. The material power that is around you now can either be an advantage or a disadvantage, depending on how you respond to it. Do not let your current position determine who you are. Remember to give back and prime the pump of prosperity for true spiritual and material wealth is as much about giving as it is receiving. Seek proper investment advice and realize that you don't have to hold on to your possessions too tightly. Just be flexible and allow things to continue to flow. Well, that's what I have for you. I hope that message helped some of you out there. Um, again, uh, don't forget to click on this I and get on over to the website and sign up for the free newsletter. And uh, until next time, namaste. Quickly. Now it all makes sense, that king of spades and that past life on that nine of swords. This can be the idea that you are carrying forth that energy of I'll never amount to anything or I can never achieve anything. Maybe this is someone in your this incarnation who has kind of told you that father, brother, boss, friend, whatever the case may be. Um, but the cards say it's the power of the experience. That firm foundation. Keep going. Okay, that's it. Bye.